Son las cinco y media de la mañana Y yo tengo una gran noticia que darles Gracias a nuestro queridísimo patrocinador Toyota Nos vamos a Los Ángeles a hacer tres episodios Así es, durante la época de frío Nosotros nos vamos al calorcito A entrevistar a tres de mis ídolos Los veo en el ley ¡Nos vemos en Los Ángeles! Desayuno en Los Ángeles. Así es, gordos. Eso es lo que sucede cuando tenemos presupuesto y contactos. Los Ángeles es la segunda ciudad más poblada de Estados Unidos, caracterizada por estar llena de actores, productores, músicos, comediantes, etc. Fracasados. De miles de personas que están ahí intentándolo, pocos lo logran. Pero una vez que te estableces y creas algo, los frutos son muchos. Como el hecho de poder degustar un sabroso desayuno en tu lugar favorito todos los sábados, acompañado de un delicioso jugo de naranja mientras el sol de California te baña. A pesar de que la mayoría de los lugares de comida en Estados Unidos están repletos de comida procesada, llena de azúcar y grasa, hay peculiares espacios que lo mantienen orgánico y con sabor de casa, como Birdie, el café favorito de Adrian Young, el productor y compositor de hip hop por el cual su marrano favorito estuvo dispuesto a viajar con tal de conocer su estudio y tragar a su lado. Cerdo fanático. No, no me Mi panza me tiene confianza Trae a la esposa del chef que quiero besarla Tenedor, cuchillo, cuchara Listo amigo, esto es Yum, yum, extravaganza Yeah Bienvenidos a esta emisión de Ñam Ñam Extravaganza, donde todo se trata de tragar y platicar. El día de hoy tenemos un episodio especial, señoras y señores. Eh, me encuentro afuera del Art From Studio, que es donde trabaja el genio creador Adrian Young. Él ha hecho beats para Jay-Z, ha hecho scores para eh, series como Luke Cage. Es un músico de jazz, es impresionante. Ha producido dos discos para Ghostface Killa. Entremos y conozcamos a la leyenda viviente, el señor Adrian Young. Él es un productor. Probablemente no han escuchado de él, pero no tienen idea el genio con el cual estamos a punto de interactuar. Acompáñenme. How long did it took you uh, to build this whole uh, um, space? Because this, this is like a particular space, right? Yeah, I've been, I've been building my studio for 20 years, man. So this particular space, I've been here for a little over a year. But my entire studio, everything you see here is stuff I was acquiring, um, you know, when I was like 20 years old, 19, 20 years old. Actually, 18, actually, because I got something there when I was 18. So. Um, You know, my dream was always to have a facility where I can really become the artist I've always wanted to be, you know? So, um, you know, I started off sampling records and, and making hip hop music, and I realized with sampling, I was limited, you know? And I wanted to be able to expand my ability, so I just, I bought a piano, and then I bought a bass guitar, and then I bought a guitar, and then I bought some drums, and, you know, when I was in school at the time, I would just come home and just practice every day. And uh, my dream was to, you know, be able to make music and just someday have an orchestra and, you know what I'm saying, all that. So it's kind of a, a vision and when, when you walk into here, you're walking into my dream becoming a reality. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. So at some point uh, you were listening to the samples and you, and you thought like this, I mean, I like yeah. it, but I... I it well, has you know what, what it is, it's just like if, if you're listening to a sample and it goes... Uh, I, I'll give you an example. So if oh, I'm on the, uh, so here, let, me, let me move this stuff over here. If I find something and there's a sample and then the sample goes, doom, doom, boom, boom, doom, 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 my head would want to go, boom, boom, doom, 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 boom, boom, doom, 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 That's where my head would go. You see what I'm saying? So if the sample was just, just that, I could sample that part, but I couldn't. You know, I couldn't do all that extra stuff. So my mind was going a lot further than the samples were allowing me to go. And I just said, you know, I need to learn how to play instruments. And not only do I need to learn how to play instruments, I need to learn how to play instruments and record like these records, make it sound like these records I'm listening to, which is a, like late 60s, early 70s sound. And I always say to people that my favorite era of music is 68 to 73. It's just something about that sound. So my entire studio is based on that era. What was your, the, the first uh, instrument you, you, you grabbed? The first instrument I grabbed was a piano. Yeah. But you didn't study like 
in no, school, right? No, you no, were studying I, law in yeah, law Yeah, exactly, and, exactly. So, so, so my thing is that um, I always tell people, if third graders can play instruments, you're a grown adult, you could do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you could do it, right? I always say to people also that, especially hip hop producers, hip hop producers have sampled so much music and listened to so many records from around the world that our brains um, are, are, are fairly musically advanced because of how much music we've studied. So by the time you get on an instrument, you instinctually want to go certain places that you just don't have the ability to go. You want to do the boo boo doo 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 You want to do a run like that, but you just don't know the fingering. So you got to sit there till you learn the fingering because music is ability and sensibility. Sensibility is just knowing what is cool. Ability is your actually ability to do it. That just takes practice, but all of us that love music have been studying music for so long that the sensibility is already there. You just gotta tap into it by developing your ability, you know? And how did you jump from law school to well, like I've always, dynamite I, at a garage? Yeah, I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to be an artist, but I always say it's best for an artist to have an education. A lot of musicians don't really have education or formal education. That is not something that really helps them in certain situations. Me having that academic side, me teaching and all that stuff helps me on this side. Even just analyzing, because you know, in law school you learn how to analyze, you know? So just sitting there looking at the instrument and analyzing, why do I like this so much? Why should this be written this way? Um, why should this song be sound this way, you know? How did you jump, uh, how, how did you decide like, all right, oh. I'm quitting law. Well, it's not, law well, you, well, 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 you gotta realize that it wasn't, necessarily a jump. It's a lifestyle. I love academia. I love reading books. I love doing school stuff. I also love doing music. I just like doing music and being a filmmaker a little more. So while I was uh, in law school, I learned how to edit film because I was very hit into the hip hop dance culture and DJ culture. I wanted to document what was going on in Los Angeles at the, in Los Angeles at the time. So I was just filming a bunch of my homies, filming, filming a bunch of parties that I was doing and started editing. And at the same time I was doing music and one of my really, really dear friends was a director of Black Dynamite. Dynamite! declaring war on anybody who sells drugs in our community. And he basically said, would you like to edit this film and also do the score? Because I do 70s type music, but I'm a, I was also a great editor at the time. So something that was a hobby to me turned into something where I became a professional editor, a feature film editor. And it helped me to propel my career to where I am right now. When you were making Black Dynamite, were you like so afraid, like, what the hell am I doing? Am I at a garage making music for a No, because that's the film? dream. No, that's the dream. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I always say to people that you put yourself in the position to exceed expectations when opportunities arise. So, you know, me being a film editor, me putting in the work learning how to edit, me putting in the work to know how to make certain kinds of music, I always want to score. No more time, no more time will I give to your cry. So it was like a perfect opportunity that came at the right time for me. And I was able just to go full force and, and just in, involve every part of myself into that to make a foundation for what my later career would be, you know. You're crazy. That's a compliment. You're <laughs> crazy. Thanks for the, for showing us this of studio. Course. It's amazing. It is a, a dream. You always uh, record on tapes. Yeah, really. It's all analog. It's all what? analog. Yeah. Why is that? Because analog is the best. It's the best uh, recording medium ever created. Um, with analog, you're basically getting like a full resolution. So look at analog as if it's film. You know, when you're shooting in film. If you watch a great old Western movie and you see the cinematography, you're like, yo, that shit blows me away. It's just something that is real and it's not an emulation. Not to say you can't make music without tape. You can still make great music without tape, but it all depends on what you're doing. My era of music, my era of sound is 68 to 73 made for a modern audience, but I want to use the tools, the elements that they used in order to make something for today, like looking back to move forward. And this is the nucleus of my studio. This collects my data. Analog tape, I mean, if you think from Frank Sinatra to Marvin Gaye to whomever, if they didn't record on tape, they, the, the music wouldn't even be the same. That's how important tape is. You know? it's, it's not all mess sometimes? Like, no. Oh, you, no, no, because I mean, you like, get to handle it right I, now? I've been, using, I've been using this, I've been using this machine for about 17, 18 years. So all the records has been through the, like, something every, about April, Every single thing, Ghostface, Luke, Luke Cage, Cage, everything. Everything yeah, has everything, been through everything that. Everything is on this machine, yeah. <laughs> wow. And then that drum set over there, that's 
every single thing you hear from me is from that drum set. That's from Black Dynamite. Everything, you know. Yeah, these these are all these are all the ingredients to to what I create, you know. Well, let's go grab okay. coffee. I'll, let's I'll do keep it, more, man. I'll, I'll be more all weird good, today. <laughs> all good. <laughs> I'll keep asking with these weird questions. No, no, nah, none of these questions are weird. Let's order. I get my eggs scrambled. Let's have our already said. Yeah, okay. scrambled and then, uh, yeah, and uh, orange juice as well. Okay. You want orange juice? Or Adrian's special. Yeah. Adrian's special breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have that Tabasco sauce or something? Yeah. So how did you jump yeah. from making all these jazz beats to be working with the Ghostface Killer? So um, when I had the opportunity to create Black Dynamite, I knew I was going to do something that was going to amplify my musical styling. You see what I'm saying? I use Black Dynamite to make the kind of music that Wu-Tang lovers would love. And in doing that, it brought me to Ghostface, it brought me to RZA, it brought me to Snoop, you know what I'm saying? Like all these people I've always wanted to work with, because I did that, they discovered me. If you dream it and work hard to try to make it happen, you can make it happen. But I was like, you get a phone call like, hey, yeah. the almighty Tony Stark's on the phone. It was no, it was, it was basically uh, RZA was starting a new label and uh, his partner on the label called me to do an album with them, with, with Ghostface. And I was like, yeah, I've always wanted to do an album with Ghostface. And what's crazy is, a year before that, I, I did a show in Colorado, and somebody showed me a mix that they did where they took my songs and put Ghostface and Wu-Tang a, a cappellas on it. And I was like, yo, that just sounds dope. I was like, that just sounds dope. And then, literally a year later, I got a call from RZA's label saying, yo, we'd love to bring you in to do some stuff. So that's how that happened. Lawyers and judges quick to toss cases when I say so. King in New York with pesos, leaving them foaming mouth stitch, eyes wide shut for speaking on my firm. Yeah, it's crazy. Do like, Fuck. Yeah, I was I was tripping, man. That's like it's a real dream come true, you know? You know, when you're working with the artists you love, yeah, it's great to make music with them, but what's really special about it is just that you become friends with people that you have admired. The fact that I could call him and be like, bro, I miss you, man. How you been? You know, and he's like saying, like, that's the special part. The boat rides with the Risa. You like, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yo, yeah, that's crazy, right? That's what divine <laughs> shit you do. Like, I'm gonna put it in context. No, that's, that's what I'm talking about because Risa, he's a friend, but he's also like a mentor to me, you know? But I can hit him and be like, yo, man, this is what I'm doing right now. That's what I'm trying to do. And he'd be like, yo, try this or try that, you know? And, and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Like dog, bong, you bong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You you suggest you to try another thing you do. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, and when you see somebody like that, that is so charismatic, so intelligent, you know, um, and just he's such a pioneer in so many things, like you learn from him because he's another person that he just had a dream. He didn't want to be in prison. He didn't want to be in jail. He didn't want to die young. He wanted to do music. A weak leak in the team, in the chain of combustion. Don't trust her. Well, this is my this is my usual seat. Actually, this is where I sit every Saturday. This is amazing. I, yeah. I didn't know it was going to be so good. No, it's, <laughs> it's really yeah, it's good. good. It's very good. Don't look in camera so we're horrible. This, but it's a maldita delicia. It's delicioso. So we're talking about uh, something about April album. What did you decide to make that, that kind of album? When I first saw it, I, I thought it was a movie. Uh, oh, <laughs> well, now, yeah. now I have to watch something about April. I have to know what's happening with, with these two characters. Um, and was it like a, to, a, to do a fake score? My first album, which is Venice Dawn, I came, came out in 2000. And uh, it was a fake Italian score. Fake Italian score, because I love Italian soundtracks. So in doing that, when I did something about April, I wanted to be a continuation of this whole Venice Dawn, a fake Italian score type look. That's why it has that look. It doesn't say anything on it in regards to this is a soundtrack, but the, the album art and everything makes you feel like it's like one of those old soundtracks. Yeah, like and that's a, what I really wanted to get across. Like a love cliche movie. Yeah, exactly. Right. I also work with the Delphonics again to do like well, the rework of the albums. That was another dream. Crazy. How I, how I got a hold of William Hart, which is the lead singer, is... I can do an impression, maybe. Huh. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> 
Yeah, 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 that's good. From something about uh, April, the the first one, you got this amazing song called Sirens. And it got so viral because of Jay Z. Yeah. Uh, that was a moment. I need to ask you that as a fan. Do you get that the, the Jay Z call? It was like, hey, what's up, baby? Actually, that beat's amazing. Can I use it, or they, they don't let you know? <laughs> you... Well, at the time I was signed to a label, Wax Poetics. They got a call from somebody from Jay Z's camp saying we want to assemble that song. We were all tripping, like, holy shit! What's crazy about that song, Sirens? I swear to God, when I made that song, it said. I need this song to get sampled by like a Jay-Z or a Kanye or something. I swear to God, that's what I said. That's one of the last songs I made on that album because I wanted people to, to know that I'm a hip-hop dude. So literally, I foresaw that it was going to be sampled. You know? You, you make a song like... Yeah, like this sounds like on some hip-hop so, 60s shit. So you can like... Uh, yeah, exactly. So it can be likable for, for Jay-Z or Kanye or No, ser like dead serious. Dead serious. And then it actually happened. Let's make love on the million in the dirty hotel with the fan on the ceiling, uh. Yeah, man, it's crazy. You need to score for a Netflix series. How how did it fail to, especially of, uh, of uh, this uh, African-American character, um, Luke Cage? To be part of it, like. Well, it was a very special thing, man, because this is the first black Marvel television show. So Ali and myself had to really make sure we did it right, did the music right. And it was an opportunity to be able to share our music with millions of people that otherwise wouldn't even know who we are. So musically, we had to do something something that uh, made sense. And we also had to do something that represented this part of the Marvel Universe. So we wanted to make it sound like it was very hip hop, but then very soulful at the same time. And usually for these kind of opportunities, they don't, even though it's a black show, Many times a black composer doesn't even get a job. So it was just special to be able to work with the showrunner, Shayo Coker, and a team that understood that we wanted to make the music as real to the character as possible. So it was definitely an honor. You're the guest with the most, <laughs> like, precise answers. Yeah. <laughs> like, pop, 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 pop. There you go, there's your information. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> to be working with, with all these rappers, is it, does it happen in the studio or you work the beats and then you send them to him? Um, nine out of 10 times, we're in the studio because I like that old school production. I like being in the same room. I love that. So most of the times we're in the studio. Today I have Rakim, you know, the legendary Rakim come to the studio where we'll be doing stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. One, two, three, ah! Uh, by George. By George. When I record vocals, recording it on tape, it's just gonna sound so good, you know? So when I can, that's what happens. When I can't, you know, I have to just send it off, have them send it back to me. I always thought you were like this uh, kind of Frank Dukes that makes all of it and, and then sends it. Mm -hmm. No. And I, I know, because you make that uh, like the regular album and then the instrumentals. Yeah. You always work uh, like separately and then you do all the vocals. You no, know, usually we're all in the room. I'm doing stuff, you know? So usually like if I have an artist right here, um, usually if, if I have a session at three o'clock, that means I'll come in and studio very early and make something for the artist. So by the time they get there, they can hear where the music is. And the music's not totally finished, but they can hear at least where it is. And then um, they say, I like that, and then they'll do their thing, and then I'll finish it the next day. That's usually how it works. How do you get together with, with, with Ali Saeed Muhammad? How do you met him, and how do you start working? How did that guy jump from uh, DJing a Tribal Quest to be playing the midnight hour oh. jazz jams with you? <laughs> to all the people who can quest like a tribe does before this did you convince him? Was he into it or...? I was on tour with Ghostface and out of nowhere I get a tweet from Ali saying something about he loves my music. And I was like, bro, like, I'm a, I mean, Tribe Called Quest is my favorite, you know? So I said, uh, thank you, brother. I would love to meet you sometime. And, and uh, it just so happened that I was in Brooklyn at that time. It just so happens that I was staying like a half a mile from where he lives. Which is crazy. Crazy coincidence. So on this tour stop, I was like, yo, man, let's have lunch. We had lunch and just, we just, from that point on, we became very close. I asked him to be part of my album I did with a group called Souls of Mischief. And uh, he, he flew out, he was part of that. And then we just started making music and we realized how much we just loved making music together. And unbeknownst to many people, he's really good at instruments, but people never really knew that. So I just kind of pushed him a little bit just to get more into instruments and more into instruments, more into instruments. And then... Uh, yeah, you're that school that closed the laptop and grabbed the... Yeah, exactly. 
And then he just started doing it more and more. And then we got Cheo Coker, who's a showrunner for Luke Cage, called Ali separately and called me separately and was just saying he would love us to score Luke Cage, but he didn't even know we were working together. So like, his dream was to have us two working on a score because of our musical sensibility. And then he realized that we were working together, it's like, holy shit. So it's like all coincidence, you know? It's like putting yourself in that position to win. And that's, what, that's how that all happened. And then Ali flew out here for us to, you know, just build and work together, you know? We've just been very close ever since. You always get like these uh, moments that seem like a, like a coincidence. Yeah. But it's not. The, the hard work you've been through, it, it, it's no. good you on, on that one. I always say that if you make calculated decisions, some of those decisions are, or let me rephrase, if you reach for dreams that may seem out of reach, but if you try hard enough, there's a fair possibility it might happen, you'll get some of those opportunities. So, you know, things happen. I just finished the album with Snoop, like a crazy black exploitation 70s type album with Snoop. Now what a pity, a footnote to the cutthroat. It's rare, see I was told all in love. Is and it's one of my favorite albums in my catalog. And like, I've always wanted to work with Snoop. What's gonna happen after this comes out? Who am I gonna work with at that point, you know? So it's, uh, it's you always putting yourself in the position to win when these opportunities come, you know? So it's not necessarily a coincidence because it shouldn't be a surprise. When you work that hard to yeah, you know, when you to work, get that. Yeah, when you work that hard to get something you, and you get at least one of those things, you shouldn't be surprised. Like, that's what's supposed to happen. Most people don't have the patience. What else do you have on the door? Well, like, what do you have as a next project? You released two albums in a year, right? The Voices of Gemma and the yeah, yeah, Night yeah, yeah, yeah. And then finishing the album for Lauren Oden, which has been my lead singer for everything since Black Dynamite. There's a, there's a young Latina girl, she's like 16 years old, named Angela Munoz, that's incredible. I'm recording her album. I'm doing a straight like psych rock album with uh, one of my close friends and bandmates, Jack Waterson. Um, I'm also working on a part two Midnight Hour album. Uh, we're wrapping up the score of a film called Run This Town. And I'm also doing a television show, a new show on Netflix called uh, Raising Dion. So. Do you sleep? <laughs> I, I try, man. I try, you know, but uh, but yeah, so that's what's going on. I just need to know, at what time do you wake up? I wake up early, man. Um, I wake up at 5.30, like every day, because I'm a very morning person. So because I know I'm a morning person, I know that's when my brain's gonna be operating at its fullest, you know? So when I wake up early, get in and do stuff, by the time it's like one o'clock, I got so much shit done without people bothering me, you know? So I would say, if you're a morning person, wake up early and work. You'll extend your hours in the day. And like you could just relax the rest of the day if you want to, or just keep working if you got the energy. What tip would you give to uh, any artist or musician or whatever the art form uh, who's starting to do so? What, 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 what tip I would say is uh, the Adrian Young Adrian golden Young tip. tip. Yeah. My tip would be that success is really based on your belief system. It's really based on the only opinion that really matters, which is your own belief. And if you believe in yourself, you can do anything. Like you literally can do anything. So if you think about it, if you're a vocalist and you question your vocals, that shouldn't stop you from being a professional vocalist. Especially nowadays when these vocalists can suck. You know what I'm saying? Like shouldn't stop you, you know? If you want to be a painter, then be a fucking painter. But just do it and figure out how to do it and do it every day. And, and look at yourself as your real job, your real, your real nine to five. If you have a nine to five job that you gotta do every day, that's cool, but that's supposed to supplement your real job, which is you putting yourself in the position to become the professional you're supposed to be. And if you do that every single day, then you will do that. Otherwise, just be a normal person. Normal people don't take those risks, but normal people don't travel the world doing what they love as well. They're not buying shoes in Japan with, right. without, <laughs> right. with, with part of a tribe called Right, price. exactly, you know? But it's really like, yo, you want some shit? Go for it. The worst thing that could happen is you don't get it. You ain't gonna die. Adrian, you've been amazing. You've been, you've been amazing. You too, bro. Amazing interview. Uh, can we just go back to the shop so I can Absolutely. buy the albums and you can give them a sign? Absolutely, let me get the check. <laughs>